So good night, good evening, good morning. I am Jonathan Mannion. I am back with you. Uh, it is happening again, office hours. Uh, 10.30, sorry for the 30 minute delay. Uh, the life of a photographer never stops. Um, so I don't know, let me just tell you, I guess let me break down a little something, a little something personal, maybe that'll help you in your journey. So literally, I just got out of a cab 10 minutes ago. I was in a meeting with uh, my, uh, a really dear friend of mine who works in video, um, had some questions to ask of her. It was, uh, a woman who works at Sony, you know, so there was a business meeting, took him to a restaurant, went around the building, touched the people, uh, saw basically 10 people did an impromptu interview. And this is all since like six o'clock tonight. You know, um, one of the things I guess I want to talk to you tonight is about being prepared for anything. I mean, literally, this kid sort of came up and said, we're doing this thing. We want you to do an interview. Are you down? And to know that you are always prepared and ready for a situation. As a photographer working in the industry, you have to realize that it's bigger than just uh, a photo shoot. You know, you have to be endearing, you have to be attentive, you have to be able to display your vision. You know, these are all things that I've been talking about as we've been going through, um, you know, the, the different uh, resources that I've been posting, right? So, you know, it was a hectic day. It was a lot of production. I was in the office all day today getting ready to shoot a video uh, down in Trinidad. Uh, so get in that production. You know, the speed bumps that you deal with. Uh, with production in general and like having to assemble a team of people. I know this is about photos, but it's, it is about getting a team around you to surround yourself with the right people to enable you to create your vision at the highest level. Like think about who makes you stronger. Like what are you not good at? You know, maybe those kind of considerations as you're moving, you know, from amateur into kind of being a professional, think about all those things. Like, are you good at pitching yourself or do you need an agent? Are you an incredible lighting technician or is your pictures more about the moment? Do you need a lighting person? You know, so all of these kind of considerations and I know there's varying levels and I'm going to touch on all of that tonight, but you know, all of these things are considerations as you begin to assemble your team, your hardcore crew of people that will ride or die for you. Um, you know, it's just something that was on my mind having these resources around to be able to problem solve even if you can't totally do it for yourself. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good day, it was a positive day, but there's always going to be challenges. So uh, moving to the projects, the mood boards were incredible. There are many that I will actually create a post for. I was moved by so many of your efforts, you know, as you're thinking through your own problem that you took the time to really execute these mood boards and create something that defines your vision or where your inspiration comes from. Uh, I think it's always important to, to keep all of those things in mind as you're creating a picture. Um, yeah, I will post those. I will post those. There's about 20 that stick out in mind. I was going to call them out individually, but it's going to be easier for me to kind of run down. Many of them are also photographers and images even that I respond to. But, you know, a lot of them seem to, seem to have some really vibrant energy, beautiful portraits, amazing tones. Like, I really want to see how you translate what you're inspired by into what you're creating. And, and I think that, you know, knowing some of your work and having spoken to a handful of you throughout this process, it's been nice to kind of touch and give encouragement or thoughts of like, think about this problem, maybe think about it in a different way. Um, I, you know, I hope all of these things are, are helping you as you advance. Um, one thing that I wanted to touch on, and it's, it's, uh, it came basically from a question online uh, that I responded to, but I wanted to touch on it for everybody. You know, there was a, a video that I posted of me shooting John Contino um, as a resource, and I hope that it was helpful to see my process, what I go through, what I think about when I'm creating an image. Um, one of the questions was, you know, I handed him this camera that was a Leica S2 um, that I had to test drive, and it was an amazing camera, and Leica, if you're listening, thank you very much for allowing it to me. Um, I had an amazing run with it, and, uh, you know, 
there was a comment that came in like, well, what if we don't have that camera? Then, you know, like, then what do we do? We don't have a $50,000 camera. We're lost and we can't do anything. Like, no, it is not about the camera at all. I say it all the time. It's always about the vision, you know. There are cameras that can make your vision come to life better than others. Like, if you want a really sharp, super tack, sharp lens, maybe you need a Hasselblad with an incredible back or, you know, a film camera with a beautiful lens, super crispy, and, like, that is going to achieve your vision. Maybe you want a Holga, you know, a cheap plastic camera that gives you this dream-like sort of moody kind of feeling. I think these are all things that are considerations as you go through your process. Like, what camera do I use and why, you know? You know, I think these days people kind of only uh, rely on one camera. You know, a digital camera, you can do so much with the files. It's very flexible. You know, I find looking back to the work that we did, we traveled with, you know, anywhere between, you know, 10 and 20 cameras at any given moment. You know, Fuji 617 because it did a panoramic, you know, a long frame like this or a long frame like this, depending on how you turned it. You know, a Rolleiflex that you look down into Hasselblad, same thing, Pentax 645, Pentax 67, you know, all these workhorse film cameras that like defined an era, you know, are now like squashed into one camera, a Canon 5D Mark II, um, 5D Mark III, all these kind of things. It's one kind of a digital camera that everybody's using. You know, consider, consider your final product as you're kind of going through the motions as well. You know, like, what do you want? Do you want a long letterbox in the end of an image? If that's the image you have in mind, what's the best camera to use for that? Maybe it's film, maybe it's digital. You know, it's it's kind of up to you to decide. Um, so that was one camera in, uh, sorry, that was one question that came in to me that I wanted to respond to. It's it's never really the camera. Cameras can help or, or hinder your progress, but ultimately it's not the camera, you know? It's about the vision and certainly understanding what the lenses are. Lens quality is also a big thing, you know? What is a wide, like, if you push in very close on a, you know, super wide lens, you're going to get this kind of a bow to the edges and get more of the setting, but maybe you want it in tighter and crisper, and I'm demonstrating. But, you know, like on a longer lens, you know, there's, there's less of that uh, sort of almost like bowing to the edges, that wide angle kind of feel, um, you know, what is going to best serve, like really understanding the different lenses, you know, the, you know, a 35 versus a 50 versus the 85 versus the 100 macro, like know the difference because it might help you in your process of achieving these pictures, you know. Uh, a lot of you are now in process fully. The mood boards have been achieved. You're moving on. You are attacking these photos. And, you know, I hope it's been a rewarding process to actually have a little bit more of an understanding of, you know, what your vision is um, from the mood boards and you're executing exactly what's in your head. You know, I'd love to know what the challenges are that you are experiencing. Um, you know, and a question because I think a lot of people are probably going through the same sort of issues, you know, as you're moving forward. Um, one of the things that came in, again, as another question, and I want to touch on it, um, was creating a vibe with the subject. Like, how do you get out of your subject what you want out of them? And there's, there's no definitive rule. There's no rule, like, if you say this, you will get that. You know, you know it's just interpersonal, you know, relations. Like, how are you able to make somebody comfortable, make everybody calm about what they're doing to be able to achieve this or to create the tension? Again, I touched on that uh, in a resource that I posted yesterday uh, where I spoke about the DMX story, um, the drummer from TDK, uh, and some other kind of moments. Hopefully these are all sort of helpful, helpful kind of items. Um, Stepping back, I, I realize that there's a massive range of people that are shooting from like professional people that are working on a regular basis that want to just take this on as a personal project to like, you know, and <laughs> I use a high and low and it might not even be the same. Like who's to say what's, what's better if you're creating a great image, you know, on your iPhone versus, you know, the $80,000 film camera, like who's to say what's good or bad? I think it's all you know, very subjective what you respond to 
as image makers and what you are inspired by out there in the world. Um, but one thing was sort of like, you know, a lot of people are shooting daylight outside and on the street. And one of the challenges that I'd like to pose, you know, to people like, oh, what do we shoot? Again, there's no rules. It's just what you respond to. So I think understanding what light does is um, a, a really key component to creating the picture that you want to make. Um, I'm going to have a challenge tomorrow, and it's a very, very simple one that I can verbally say now, but take any object that you want to put. You know, it's a, a bottle of lotion or a little figurine or a statue or a shoe or something, right? and put it against the wall. Hopefully, you know, you have a little 90 degree angle kind of action and take a light bulb, right? And just go and just look at the shoe and move the light around, right? And see what that light does on the background, on the foreground, and what it looks like. You know, even better if you can set your camera on a tripod and move this light around, see what it does, you know? I'm demonstrating this is the light. This is the universal sign for move the light around. <laughs> Um, but give it a try. Those those of you shooting in studios, I think it's a it's a helpful reminder just to see what light does and how it reacts. Ideally, you can do that with a subject as well. Like I chose for the John Contino video to take a light source that was very uh, simple and straightforward. Little fill cards, a little fill down low. Very very simple and straightforward, just to kind of convey the basics. Um, Many of you, like I said, are shooting outside, and I think that it's important to understand what open shade looks like. If you put somebody in the shade with a light source behind you, like a big bright sun, and you just tuck them right into the shade, what is that going to do? Like, look at the eyes. There's a nice reflection and glow that happens. You know, if you step them back into the sun, you know, is that light on people's face going to be harsh? Is it too harsh for you, or does it achieve what you want? Maybe you want those hard, crisp lines, you know, backlight, flipping to put the sun behind somebody. What does that do? Does it flare out too much? How do you have to adjust your exposure in order to achieve these things? You know, if you're working with film cameras or digital cameras, all of these things are just about the settings, you know, aperture, you know, shutter, shutter speed, all these kind of things you can play with to learn it. If you're just doing it on an iPhone and you just want to sort of take better pictures, you know, I think it is about looking at light. Go for the moments. And, uh, and just see what the camera does, even all the settings on, say, Instagram or something like that. Play with them, run through them, and see what different feelings you like, and then try and duplicate it with your real camera. You know, I think that's a good, a good challenge. Like, can I do all of the settings on my Instagram on a real camera? You know, for sort of the beginners that are just getting into it, it sort of challenges to kind of learn your craft. Um, uh, the lesson today is called making selections. So seemingly you will have spent some time creating images or you're getting ready to and I just want to touch a little bit on uh, the selection process. Um, there will be another video and it's me editing my John Contino shoots. Um, yeah, there were many things that, that sort of came out of the shoot that I was pleased with. Um, and again, it was straightforward. It's part of a bigger project. So spending the time, uh, maybe there were 300, 300 images. It took me a couple minutes to run through them. There were ones that emerged as great. We're having a dialogue, so I want to know what he loves as well as what I love, see how they match, and then kind of work on the collaborative project. You know, you as you're going through your pictures, there's a couple of different criteria that I want you to apply when looking at it. Um, one is like the truth in the photo. Like what were you going for in that moment? Like what is the truth of the day for you? Maybe it was like the one moment he, you know, he or she was making very serious faces all the way through and then broke down and laughed in that one moment and then went back to being serious. Like maybe that's the moment. Maybe the serious moment because it was the overriding theme is the moment of the shoot. But maybe it's that one moment that they laughed. You need to decide what the truth is in that picture. And you can respond to it or you can create it from the onset, um, you know, and then find it within the work, you know, as you're lining up all the pictures, which one best represents what you had in your mind. Um, analyzing the success of the image, you know, did you achieve what you wanted to do? 
you know, did you, you know, from the mood board and the, what you had in your mind, did you hit all your targets? Like, you know, and, and this can be arranged as well. A lot of you had images that kind of covered a lot of different areas. Um, uh, okay, yeah, the best. Some, some of the ones that stick out was like a guy diving off stage and like that energy. Did you achieve that kind of moment? Did you achieve that energy that you were trying to get from a lighting standpoint and technical standpoint? Did you achieve what you wanted? And, you know, were there any sort of mistakes, almost things, or things that you didn't expect um, did, that, that came out of these sessions? You know, and how did these, what I call, like, happy accidents? Like, I have them all the time. Like, uh, for instance, like a digital tech on my shoot didn't put the curve on, you know, a certain shot that I wanted. If I, like, warm up the picture, add some saturation, crunch down the blacks, and that's my look, like, and, you know, for whatever reason, he didn't put it on it. And it was like this blue cast. And I went back and cast everything blue because I liked it better. It fit the moment. It fit the sensibilities. And I never would have done it, um, you know, after setting the look unless it happened as an accident. Like, are these kind of things that you're exploring? Like, can you, you know, change the exposure? Like, play with the images afterwards and see what you respond to. It's nice to kind of go through the process with your favorite image and see what different feelings you can you can create, especially with the flexibility of, uh, of digital and what it offers you. Um, you know, I, I find it amazing just stepping back, and I know that this is sort of the first class that I'm doing uh, online, and uh, I'm not perfect at it, and certainly there are things that, you know, I, I could invest more time in I'm trying to touch everybody. I'm trying to read all the comments, give back as I can, cover maybe 10 questions that I see in a post or, you know, going to execute another uh, resource for you to say, all right, I see a lot of questions based on process. Let me show you my process. So I want you to know that my, my sort of oath that I took to you, my promise to you uh, that I will give my all is still fully intact. Um, I'm excited to see this new work that's coming in. I appreciate all 300 of you nearly that have submitted the work and have asked for comments. And uh, I'm certainly checking in. I'm watching. Even if I'm not commenting specifically, I'm sort of waiting to see now what you're going to achieve. And uh, I hope you're still enjoying the process and that you're getting the information uh, that you really want from me. Um, certainly, if you have questions, Post them on the forum board, you know what I mean? See what other people are, are uh, answering for each other as well. There's a great way to kind of stay connected. You should run through all these things. Like, you know, I, I guess they, they post in order of likes. Like, look at the top and then look at the bottom and just see how they differ and see what you're responding to in other people's work. It might send you down a certain lane. Uh, if I could show you my crazy desktop right now, you'd see that there's about 20 images that I pulled from what you guys were creating of things that I need to keep in mind and that I want to consider or that fit a certain project that I'm working on, you know? There's a picture of Rosario Dawson in there that was just a beautiful black and white profile. I just ripped it. She's cute. I've shot her before, but somebody shot her in an interesting way. So thinking about subjects the way you, the way other people see them as well, I think is, is a fascinating thing to explore. Um, you know, Office Hours number two, it, uh, it is happening live on Skillshare. This is Jonathan Mannion. Uh, creating powerful portraits, man. I really want to see what you come up with. I'm excited to see it. Um, I thank everybody for spending the time. Uh, I'm here in my humble house in uh, Gramercy Park, New York City. I know you guys are worldwide. I hear from you in Australia and uh, all across the country, Chicago and otherwise. And uh, I'm going to spend more time really looking at what you guys are creating to see these new projects. And uh, it's an honor to have the platform to be able to speak to you again. Uh, there will be more from me. This is by no means me coasting through the rest of it. You know, I really want to, you know, touch on all of your things, uh, you, you, all of your questions. <laughs> I don't want to touch on all your things. That gets a little crazy and weird. Uh, I want to touch on all of your questions and really answer and spend time uh, understanding where you're struggling, 
And if I can help, I certainly will chime in uh, with as rich and detailed an answer as I possibly can. Um, so all I got for you uh, tonight, uh, I'm probably going to add another live post in before I take off. I leave on Friday. I, uh, like I said, I'm headed to Trinidad. So hopefully on you know, maybe Wednesday late night, we can get another one of these in. Uh, but I'll keep you posted on the boards. Um, and on the discussion boards. Um, in the meantime, keep shooting, go for it. There's no rules, you know, so like don't overthink it too much, just shoot. Shoot, see what happens, react to it, shoot again, see what happens, react to that. You know, it's, uh, it's amazing what all you guys are doing. And uh, again, I can't wait to see what you guys achieve next. So I'm here, over and out. I'm gonna get some rest, big day tomorrow. Uh, I'll keep you guys posted about what I'm doing on Twitter at Jonathan Mannion and Facebook and all the other forms that you can find me. Uh, I'll, I'm going to send some motivation and inspiration out tomorrow, so especially to the Skillshare class. I, I appreciate, again, what Skillshare has done to allow me to really reach a body of people that want to spend the time to learn and get better. You know, I strive for that every day. You never lose that hunger. The real shooters keep on going. There's always going to be speed bumps and adversity. It's how you, uh, when your soul is tested, it's how you respond to that. And uh, I hope you guys are making some good responses. All right? I'll see you all soon. I'm out. Take care. Good night.